So let's talk about why I own a watch I don't particularly like. watches and another in my series why this watch and in this particular case I'm talking about why do I own a Seiko XKX a watch quite frankly I don't really like very much certainly don't love it and yet it's in my collection and yet I own it um, let's talk about why so why have I got a Seiko XKX <sighs> let's be honest I don't love this watch in fact if I'm being really blunt, I don't even think I like it very much. The case is a bit blobby, a bit toad-like, as though in a desperate attempt to marry, you know, marry the 42 millimeter case with such a short lug to lug, but at the same time doing all this at something of a budget, they couldn't really afford to be particularly clever about the case shape. So it ends up being a bit, a bit kind of melted, puddle of butter i just don't love it um, on top of that it's then got this really simple polish over that misshapen lump and overall let's be frank it kind of looks a bit cheap and that theme of cheapness is carried over beautifully to the dial it's really simple there's nothing special about the printing and the hands manage to you know rise to that level of mediocrity being nothing particularly special so why, after, according to the sound thing, a minute and a bit of you know, absolutely hating on this watch, is it mine? Well, frankly, I love Seiko. I love the brand. There's something about that that really gets me. And I love their prospects divers. I'm, not, I'm a, a big fan of the Turtle and the Samurai. I think those are great watches, but Seiko becomes really special when you move beyond those especially up to what is now the sbdc line the baby marine master and everything so i'm seiko and prospects divers in particular are kind of like a natural home for me i collect those so why the xkx because a collection of seiko divers without an xkx isn't really much of a collection of Seiko divers. I, you know, whether, whether I like it or not is kind of irrelevant. You know, the S SKX is something of an icon in the watch collecting game. And the beauty is it's really cheap. I mean, I got this for like 150 bucks. And so if the price of having a complete collection, the price of having something that, you know, sort of acts as a bit of a, a starting starter for this whole conversation about Seiko divers and the journey they go on is as little as 150 bucks then you know what I'm happy to do that it's not a lot of money to have a nice opening line to your story of the Seiko dive watch and um, ultimately that's why this is my watch go that's why the Seiko XKX is part of my collection sometimes it's about more than just the watch it's about how the watch fits with everything else I am a collector I like to see a collection that kind of hangs together that has themes sometimes to build that you got to be prepared to have stepping stones and bridges and, and parts of that collection which don't themselves appeal to you but are, are there to to make the whole thing hang together um, i'm happy to do that i'm happy to look back and look at the watch box and say as a 
and, and, and appreciate the watch box, the collection for what it is. How about you? Uh, do you see only each watch as a thing unto itself? Or do you like to look at your watches and do you value your watches also for how they fit in and how one watch may add to your appreciation of another? Leave it in the comments below. I've been Pete McConville. This has been Not So Obvious Watches and I'll see you later. Bye.